Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and I'd like to do a complete beginner's guide on Nessus. Nessus is a game that's in early access, it's still getting lots and lots of updates, and I've been playing it a few times here and there, and even since I've been playing the game and streaming it, it has gone through several large updates, and I think it's just a fantastic fun indie game. It's like if you take RimWorld, Terraria, Minecraft, a little Stardew Valley, and you blend them all together. It's a management game with a crafting exploration game also baked in. It's got a great style, it's got awesome music, and because it's changing all the time, I thought it would be a good moment to kind of step in and just do a guide to introduce you to the game if you're a brand new player. So in this guide, what I'm going to do is start a new world, and we're going to just begin at the basic difficulty level, the default difficulty level, and I'm going to walk you through everything I've learned about the game so far, both from my trial and error of just playing it and from uh, knowledgeable people uh, who have been helping me on stream and in the YouTube comments. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to give it to you and describe my thought process as I play, but it's going to be in a fashion that is not spoilery. I'm not going to try to tell you the fastest way to get to endgame or the exact path to min-max. Instead, I'm just going to provide the basics and the fundamentals so that you can enjoy Nessus on your own terms and play it how you want, because really, it's a very large sandbox kind of game. And you can do, you know, what you want and play and focus on what you want. So what we're going to do is start a new world and we're going to choose a name for this world. And it's going to be called um, Incomp Tutorial. And when you start a new world, you get to choose a difficulty level. Now, this is up to you. Classic mode is what we're going to be using, which is the default mode. It's You get a challenge where you have to think about your strategy and be properly prepared for fights. And this is fine. I have not found this to be too hard at all, as long as you're not rushing. You get plenty of buff potions and things like that to make this manageable. But if you don't want uh, as much of a challenge, you can scale down to adventure or even casual, depending on how you want to play the game. And if you want it to be harder, well, then there's options for that too. I'm not going to change anything at all about the world right now. I'm just going to create the world. I'm not going to edit any of the settings. Okay, and we're going to create a new character. I've got, you know, my character from my latest save here, but I'm going to make a new one. And this is going to be for the tutorial. I'm pretty sure my previous saves have been consumed by the updates uh, because I only have the one from my re most recent uh, save available, but it might only just load your last save. I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, randomize the appearance. And okay, that looks pretty sweet, but I always... Uh, give myself this nice blue skin color and uh, let me change the hair color to be a little bit more appropriate for the channel. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to be um, in comp tutorial. That's our name. But we're going to be in comp tutor to make it different from the actual world name and I'm going to create it. Now when you're creating your character, you can change these parameters, you can rotate yourself to see how you'll look in the world and mess with this however you wish. So we're going to dive in and I'm going to use this character. So it's very much like Terraria where you can keep a character and then load it onto another world. Uh, but I'm going to make a brand new character and a new world. And here we go. So once you're into the game world, it goes like this and you are launched in into a tutorial. Now, in the upper left, you can skip this tutorial if you want, but I find it to be very helpful. Let's take a look at the screen and just kind of talk about what's going on. We're not in any danger at the moment. So this guy right here 
Jaden the Elder. He'll have a different name for you. Uh, he is a NPC that is your buddy, very uh, uh, similar to Alex the Guide from Terraria. He, if he's killed, he'll just come back. He's basically immortal, and he gives you the quests. You could talk to him. You can get information from him. Up in the top center of the heads-up display, you see here's my health, and here's my hunger. The 100 out of 100 is my health. In the upper right, I have a mini-map. In the bottom center of the heads-up display, or HUD, you will see that I have uh, an action bar with equipped items that correspond to the number keys 1 through 0 on your keyboard. So I have a wooden axe. If I mouse over this, I get a tooltip that tells me this axe does 50 damage to trees uh, or enemies, and it has an attack speed of 2. The wooden sword um, does 15 melee damage. Now, I said this does damage to enemies. You can hit enemies with the wooden axe, but it does not, in my experience, it's not going to do more damage than this sword. Uh, it's also slower than the sword. The sword is better for fighting. It also knocks enemies back, whereas the wood axe does not. And this does damage to enemies and it's kind of like Zelda where you'll knock stuff back when you hit them with a sword it's very good then you have a crafting guide and this is like Alex the guide from Terraria if you right click on this you can put any item in here and it will tell you what you can craft with that so if you're curious you can uh, see that now you move around with WASD and it tells you to walk close to the tree and hit it with the axe by pressing left click. So you have the axe selected by default. It's the number one. If you want to change to the sword, you can just push two on the keyboard or click the box on the bottom. And with the axe, I can just hold left click and you see I will just chop this tree. And the pieces of the tree will fall out and I pick them up automatically uh, when I walk over them. So you see I got four spruce logs and two spruce saplings so I can replant the tree. These items are going to show up on my hotbar until I fill this up with things and it's telling you that you can press E to open the inventory and this is something you will be doing all the time. So when you push E you'll see that the bottom of the screen has exploded with boxes. On the left right here is your paper doll with your trinket slots, your armor, your cosmetics um, well, your cosmetics are actually in the middle. Your armor is over here. This grid right here uh, of 4x10 is your inventory. And so if I want, I can just pull these up here. You also get an extra row of inventory that is represented by your uh, action bar or your tool belt right here. And I'm going to put the crafting guide, for example, in my inventory. I don't need it on my hotbar. And then on the right, there is a handcrafting menu. So this is what you can craft on hand without having a workbench. And they want us to craft torches. So in this crafting menu, you can see I can make torches. And it makes four torches at a time. And to do that, it will take one log and one sapling to make four torches. And it's telling you it, it takes one log and one sapling. And then the fraction by the slash there the four, when it says one over four logs, that means I have four logs, but I only need one. I have two saplings, but I only need one. So if I click craft, I just made four torches, and I like to put them on slot zero. But to be honest, you don't need to. I'm going to put them in my bag because the game has this awesome thing where you can just push R to automatically drop a torch. But if you want more fine-tuned, control over where you put the torch you can select it to a hotbar slot like zero and then push zero and then drop it exactly on the tile you want it's up to you so now we've made the torches i'm going to push e to close the inventory but before i do that let me show you just a few more things below your paper doll there is, are these buttons there's a trash can to throw things away from your inventory you can push these arrows pointing left and right to sort your inventory and you also have restock or quick stack to nearby inventory. So like, for example, in a storage chest, if I have a stack of logs, 
I can push this button to kick all of the logs out of my inventory and go into the chest that has logs inside. Or if I want something from a chest, like more logs, I can push this button to take out everything from nearby chests and put them into my inventory. Then over here on the bottom right are a bunch of uh, buttons for your adventure party, for uh, teams and PvP. This is a multiplayer game where you, you have the option of playing at multiplayer. Your settlement, your quests, your map, um, the world map, smart mining, you just toggle that on with control. Um, and now, because I've been talking, time is passing. You see it's dark. So I'm just going to push R and drop a torch. And look at this, as soon as it becomes night, zombies are coming. So I'm gonna go fight this zombie with my sword. And I'm gonna go into the house to be safe. All you have to do is push two to select your sword and then you push left click to swing your sword. There's um, friendly fire, so don't hit your buddy like I just did, he's gonna be upset about it. And come in and they want us to talk to the elder. So right click, the elder says, underground you will find some of the best ores in the world. So this is one of the best tips that you're going to get in the game, which is that you're going to be spending a lot of time under the ground in Nessus getting ore, items, fighting enemies, and generally building yourself up. It's a great place to get new items. It's the only place to, get to really reliably get lots of ore. And this is the game loop. So I cannot overstate how much going into the dungeon is useful especially at night so you can say to the elder i'm looking for tips can you explain something to me let's look at your equipment now why would you want to look at your his equipment he is a member of your uh community right here and because he is a member of our settlement he can fight enemies so you can give him good armor to help him stay alive or fight uh and that becomes more useful as we move on. Now, I'm just gonna say I'm looking for a quest, and he says, if you place a settlement flag, I'll find quests for you. So right now, he can't give us any quests because we don't have a settlement flag. So I'm just gonna say goodbye. But if you want a settlement flag, they actually have one provided for you. Now, you'll notice the elder is going out and he's fighting enemies. The damage numbers floating above right here in yellow show that the elder is out there fighting zombies just like minecraft just like terraria enemies are going to attack you at night come to your settlement and just be roaming around and annoying they're not challenging he's got a sword just like us he's wrecking them but if you want to stem the tide somewhat of enemies put torches down so i'm just going to push r i'm going to push r where there is light less enemies will spawn so what I like to do is just put down a ton of torches. Not only does it help your visibility, but it stops enemies from spawning so close to your settlement. I'm just going to fight some of these guys just to demonstrate, but I want to show you some things inside the house. Now, right now, it wants us in the upper left for as part of the tutorial to craft a workstation with 10 logs. So we're going to need to chop down a bunch of trees. But before we do that, I'm going to come in here and say, hey, wait a minute. It says find or craft a workstation. Well, I could craft it with 10 logs, but there's actually a workstation right here inside the settlement. Now, you can use the plus and minus key on your keyboard to zoom in. So if I zoom in, it gets all unfocused and everything, but you can easily see here's a uh, workstation. Here's a chest. Here's a trinket for me to pick up and um, a container for me to access. So I'm gonna zoom out, and you can see in the upper center of the heads-up display the level of zoom. I like to be at about this level just so I can see things. Now, if I go to 100%, I have the most visibility, obviously, but everything is quite small. Again, this is just your personal preference. So plus and minus on the keyboard do this for you. Now, if I go to this chest and I right click it, you'll see that there are some items already inside. There is some food, some bread. I'm just going to put this on my hot bar at uh, the, we can put it at zero, that's fine. And then there is a local dungeon map. I'm gonna take this. You can hold left click, uh, left shift and left click to take items out of 
the storage box and put them in your inventory. And what did I take out? Well, I took out a local village map and a settlement flag. So we don't actually have to craft a settlement flag. They give us one. And I can right click on the workstation right next to the chest and you can see what items we can craft with what we have available. They want us to craft a wood pickaxe because we don't have one. But you'll notice that right here, these are the available things that I can make. I can make torches, I can make walls, flooring. This is for building houses for more settlers. Like I said, this is a management game. Just like in Terraria, we're gonna be building rooms and people are gonna move in, but it's more like RimWorld in the sense that you build exterior rooms with this top-down perspective and people don't move in based on if you have a room for them built that meets conditions like in Terraria, but instead they will just come by and you can ask them to move in. They can move in whether or not you have a room for them built, but if you don't have a room with a bed, they will be really unhappy and they might just leave your settlement over time because they're so upset with their conditions. So it's always nice to have a room built first so that they can move right in and go into the bed. Now, the reason you can't see a pickaxe right here on the workstation craft list is because in the bottom left, I have this checkbox where it says only craftable. And if I click that, now every recipe that's available to me, you can see. And the wooden pickaxe is right here. It just needs eight logs. Now in this case, it says, remember the fraction, eight. The left side of this fraction is how many I need and the right side is how many I have. So I need eight and I've got three. So I need more. So you can toggle this on or off and you can also toggle this on or off, use nearby inventory. Uh, but you see how it says use nearby inventory. And when I mouse over that, there's this big white box. This is telling you how far the range of the chests is that you can draw items from for the workstation. So anything within this white area can be drawn from, um, and it's fantastic. I love this, I always keep this on. But you can also go up here and search and filter things like only buy equipment, for example. And now you'll only get things that are uh, equipment or you could type something in. So I need a pickaxe, so I'm just gonna type in ax and then you see, well, there's the pickaxe and there's the wood ax. So I'm gonna delete this and get rid of that. Uh, and we can then collapse the b box if we wanna make it smaller. And then we have this settlement option, but we can't use this until we have a settlement itself. So I'm gonna push E to close that. All I did to use the workstation was right click it. And when you mouse over stuff, the game is going to tell you what commands you can use to interact. Now, before I go out into the world again, by the way, we're in no danger right now. Remember, the elder cannot be killed. So he can go out there and do his thing. If he dies, he'll just respawn. I'm gonna go open this spruce display and on this spruce display, it's like a display stand. It's got one slot, which is these leather dashers. And um, I'm gonna take these out, and this is a trinket that you can equip in your trinket ability slot, which is right below your cosmetic shoes. So I'm just gonna um, right click to equip, and you see it goes right here. And then if I mouse over this, it says, equip and hold space to sprint and it consumes stamina when used. So I'm gonna push E to close this up, and now um, I can actually hold the space bar and run. You'll see that this like lungs icon appears, that's my stamina, but I'm going faster, and until this um, goes to zero, I can sprint. And if I go too far, then I get tired and I have to wait for this to completely refill before I can use it. If I don't get tired, I can use this in spurts, like this, like this, um, and it will recharge when I'm not running. So this is a great item to pick up. You've got leather dashers. You can use this bed whenever you want to rest. The elder will sleep in it, but he does not have to have a bed. His happiness does not matter, unlike other people that you have in your settlement. I'm gonna go into my inventory by pushing E, and I'm gonna do some things. I'm gonna use some things. I'm gonna right click on the local dungeon map. Um, or I'm sorry, not right click it. I'm gonna left click it to pick it up and then I'm gonna left click it on myself 
to use it. I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna use it on myself. And um, now, if I look here, it says map shows east of your location. Map shows southeast of your location. What does that mean? If I push M, I can see the map of the area that I'm in from what I've explored. So this is what I've seen so far around me. This will get bigger as I move around. But if I push N, it opens up the world map. And this world map is, this is all procedurally generated. So every time you create a new world, your map will look different than mine. And I'm on this one in the middle, and then around me are different islands. And they are diff um, can be different biomes. So these are two snow biomes. There's some desert biomes. There's some more like, um, you know, island, uh, archipelago situation. And then there is a dungeon over here. There's some forests and there's me. Everything else on this map is unknown, but you can get a feel for how big this is. Look at this, it's enormous. Now, each time I get those map fragments, like you saw, I will uncover new areas that um, we haven't been yet, and these question marks will become revealed. So, I'm here, and I found some new areas nearby, getting some more information about the land with those items that I just used, and information about the underground. But... Um, let me use my settlement flag. So I'm going to pick this up. If I left click on the settlement flag or just push five, because it's on my action bar, you'll see that there's this like ghosted settlement flag. This is how you place stuff. And I'm just going to put it right there. And then you can name your settlement. And we're going to call this, um, tut the, uh, tutorial settlement. And now we've got a settlement. You'll see there's my icon right there. Now this dude right here, Dale the Hunter, he's an NPC and you can right click and talk to him and you can buy stuff from him, you can sell stuff to him, but you can also ask him to join your settlement. And he says, yeah, I'll join you, but you have to give him 41 leather and 203 coins. We have no coins and we have no leather, so we can't get him right now. But the settlers that you'll see, they usually have very clear identifiers of what kind of labor they're good at. Like, I'm a fisherman, or I'm a farmer, or I'm a warrior, or whatever it is. And I just got a map fragment uh, that you can see, and you can combine these to get maps at the uh, crafting station. So, at this point, I have a cook fire out here that I can use to make food. I've got a little garden growing sunflowers, and we've got this house. But what we want to do is get the pickaxe so that we can go down in the dungeon and mine stuff. So I'm just going to select my axe and just follow the tutorial. Just chop stuff up. Bam, bam, bam. It is worth noting that you have absolutely no stamina in this game for uh, chopping down trees or doing anything besides running, like things that say they use stamina. So you can just chop down trees all day long. Also up here, um, you can see that this little blue house icon appeared because I'm near my settlement flag. This is where your buffs and debuffs will go to the right of your health bar over here. So if I'm near this, then this also will reduce the spawn rate. So we put torches down. Oh, we got a Christmas hat. This is a seasonal item for doing stuff right now. And, hey, there's somebody hiding back here. Who's this guy? Oh, it's the Elder. And um, now you can get a quest from him. So he's got that yellow exclamation point for quest because we built the settlement flag. So you can say, I'm looking for a quest. And he says uh, he wants fake fangs from vampires. So we can find these in the dungeon below and just accept the quest. So he'll just give you random quests uh, of varying degrees of difficulty and you can accept them or just reject them and get another quest and he will give you rewards if you could complete them this is an easy quest for us to do we just have to kill a vampire down below it is worth saying you see how i have 100 health my health will slowly regenerate if it's been reduced but if i drink a potion i can speed that up now i don't have any potions right now but you'll see that my hunger has dropped time to eat so i'm just going to push this bread and i'm going to eat it and it fills up my hunger 
but notice I got another buff for eight minutes. If you eat this food, this bread in particular, you get 20 extra health. So now my health goes up to 120. So it's always worth having eaten some of this bread that you start with. And do I have enough wood right now? I have 44 logs. That seems pretty good. I'm going to go over to this workbench and or workstation. I'm going to use this. And now I'm going to click only craftable and we could just make a wooden pickaxe. And I'm going to put it right here on my hotbar. And they want us to go underground, which is, yes, the right thing to do. Now, before I go underground, however, I'm going to right click on this storage box and I'm just going to shift left click spruce logs, oak logs, sapling, sapling, map fragment, because I don't need to carry those around. I want to have my inventory as free as possible for the underground. And I got a Christmas hat and I could just put this on my cosmetic slot and put on a Christmas hat if you wish, if you're feeling festive or you just put it in your box and don't use it. Now they want us to go underground and we go to the dungeon ladder. It's right here in the left room of this house. It will, even if your map is different to mine, which it will be, it's randomly generated. You will always have this starter house with exactly laid out like this with an elder and you get click right and you go down and now you'll see there's another map for this dungeon and i've gone inside but what am i missing oh my god i'm missing torches i'm gonna leave i have no light so i'm going to use this and i'm going to make torches i'm gonna shift left click torches to make as many as i can which is 104 i used like all of my logs and saplings to make torches but i want as many as i can because i'm gonna push r and I want to drop torches down here. Torches will help you see in the dungeon, but they will also reduce enemy spawn rate. And look at that, there's an enemy right there. He hit us. So it's a good opportunity, we killed him. Watch my health, it's at 103. It will slowly start to go back up. 104, 105, when I'm out of combat, it's going up. Now, I can see, and it wants us as the tutorial to mine ore by pressing uh, left click with the pickaxe, but you can also just bust open these presents and you get stuff, coins, arrows, what you get will show above your head, and you we just got torches. So I know I made a bunch of torches, but you will collect more torches in the underground. I just love light, so I always make a million torches. You can see in your inventory, there is no weight in this game. It's just based on slots and things stack up very, very high. So I can have a lot of torches. I can have a lot of coins, thousands on one stack. To fill up your inventory, you just fill up all of these squares. It doesn't matter how heavy anything is. And I'm gonna select my pickaxe with number three and just left click over here. Now I have smart mining on. And you can see that I'm just holding left click standing here and the cursor is just moving around mining different squares within my reach. And I can actually reach very, very far away in this game, which is awesome. And I don't want any more stone. So I'm gonna just walk over here and pick up. You can see we picked up copper ore and stone. I'm gonna push E and I'm gonna move, keep, continuously move stuff out of my hotbar up into my inventory so it stacks up there so I could keep that free for things that I want to use. Now here comes a bad guy, he's coming around. I'm just gonna kill this guy. You notice the knockback on the sword makes it really easy to fight. I'm gonna break open, that's a wooden container. It contained, hey, we got our first health potions. So you can push Q to quickly use the health potion to restore 50 health, this health potion. Um, also, it's worth pushing escape, going to settings and going to controls and just taking a look at what all of the hotkeys are for the game. Health potion, mana potion, inventory. B uses all buff potions you have. R places the torch. Armor trinket set ability is V. On and on and on. Settlement screen is C. Now, if you don't want the smart mining on, you can toggle it with control and it'll tell you smart mining off. Then that white cursor that outlines what I'm mining no longer appears and I have to manually aim it. I actually like smart mining. I think it's a good time saver, so I'm using it. And the tutorial wants us to get ores to craft bars. So we're getting ore, but 
we've got it. So we can click next, and then it says if you travel out in the water to the edge of the map, you'll be able to go to other islands, and they have different biomes, and we talked about this by pushing N to see the map. So we go next, and it says go to the surface and start your settlement by placing the flag, which we already did. You can find one in the house, and then you can interact with the flag by right-clicking it or press C to open the settlement menu, but you can't mess with your settlement when you're in the dungeon. So I'm going to put a torch down here, just pushing R. Uh, I'm going to break this open. Ow, we're getting shot. These guys are going to be the hardest guys that you fight right now, these archers, because they hit you from far away and they do a good amount of damage. Remember, you can always push Q once you have potions to use them. Now, you just saw that little guy run away. There are these little dudes that will be holding an item over their head and they run away from you. Um, I like to think of them almost like treasure goblins from Diablo. And the item that they hold is the best ore that you can get in the dungeon. So in this case, it's gold. But if you're in a more uh, difficult dungeon, it will be something fancier. Now this guy is shooting us. I'm just going to hide here so that we can get close to him and he doesn't get as many shots off on us. And this is TNT. You could pick this up or there should be a switch around here. I'm going to break this box open that will trigger it. Um, this is iron, which is amazing. We want iron for sure. Iron is our number one target because iron allows us to build better workstations. So I'm going to get some. And I'm going to go in here. Uh, we can't actually go through here right now because the TNT is blocking, which is kind of funny. But you'll notice that you can see a cavity right here. And you can even... There's the switch for this TNT, by the way. Bizarrely, you can even place stuff through a wall in this game. So I can place my torch, and here come all the bad guys. I'm just going to stand here and fight them. I'm going to use this choke point. Sometimes they drop stuff, sometimes they don't. But this is why, look at this. This is why you come downstairs into the dungeon. Because all of these wooden things you see, I can break open to get arrows, coins, whatever it might be. Now there's going to be a lot of enemies. Enemies come from the dark. So once we explore there and we put down torches, we will reduce the amount of enemies. We're getting fire arrows. We're getting torches. Bam, 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 bam. Lots of cool stuff. I'm going to use this and it will blow this up. So you'll see that we have just blown up the TNT that was connected to that switch. And, you know, conveniently broken a lot of squares, which gives us stone on and on and on bunch of stuff here that tnt actually hit us so you got to be careful of that um but oh wow look at this we get a bunch of free iron and some clay now this arrow guy is going to be annoying i'm just running around him there we go and i'm just going to go back here remember you can use your space bar to run with uh to sprint with our trinket I'm just dropping torches with R to make it so there's less zombies and so we know where we've been. If I push M to open the map, all of these yellow dots are torches and the map will expand, whoa, as we uncover more. I'm going to hide behind this corner and make it so that guy can't exploit range on us. And I'm going to actually hold down spacebar and run away. I'm going to go out and go back up and they want us to press C for the settlement flag. And when you go to the settlement screen you see on the bottom of the screen there's this ribbon that opens up with different buttons and if i click settlers you can see the only settler i have is Jaden, the elder it tells you you can change his name with this button this green button will fluctuate in color based on the level of their happiness he's happy you can assign him to a bed and you can change um their settlement that they live at or you can do other things uh, he's got this bed. We'll, we'll kick him out of the bed soon, but this is fine for now. You can see his equipment. All he has is this copper sword, for example. You can see his diet. He doesn't need to eat. So the elder is great because he doesn't need to eat. Um, you can restrict him 
two different areas. You could tell him to defend this blue zone. You could give him work priorities. The elder doesn't do um, any work, unfortunately. And you can assign them to different jobs, but that will only apply when we get actual settlers we don't have. Now we finish the tutorial by checking out that screen. There's still a lot that we have to cover about the game, but this is just our first initial look. We talked about the world map. We've talked about the local map. We've talked about the settlement screen. We talked about um, using containers, mining, going down in the dungeon, going up. And we have talked about health potions, eating food, using chests, crafting. There's a lot we still have to get into, and we will do that in the next episode. Everyone, this is going to be a series, a guide series, because there's so much to talk about in Nessus. But it's a fantastic game. It's super fun. If you have any questions, please post those in the comments below. I'd love to help you out. And I hope you have found this to be useful and fun. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care.